who do you look to as a fighter that really inspires you right now whether it's muay thai or mma who's who's a guy or gal that you look Mm. to that has their shit together where you're like oh fuck like every time i see this person fight i always pick up on something new probably uh israel adesanya that guy is that guy's uh he's an artist bro like what he does in there is like it's a piece of art um is there anything in particular that stands out about his game because he as someone who sees him and doesn't mm-hmm. really know exactly everything he's doing from a technical standpoint like he's so far ahead of me obviously like i can yeah. appreciate it but i don't understand it fully is there something that he does that sticks out to you that maybe a casual fan misses where you see it and you're like oh fuck like yeah this is the reason why he's successful i i think it's a combination of things with him i think number one it's he obviously has his fundamentals mastered and he also coming from a muay thai background has like so many tools in his toolbox as a striker he's not just a boxer he doesn't just have the left hand or the right hand he has his elbows his knees he switches stances and yes he's very dynamic in those aspects but his biggest thing with me that impresses me is that when he's fighting um as soon as that bell rings he's in there and he is fainting fainting making reads making decisions he's paying attention to what's going on and uh, he's not like falling in love with the crowd trying to hurt you he's seeing what's going to work and what's not and he doesn't do anything that's unnecessary he makes a faint reads you okay i'm gonna throw a low kick here pop Mm -hmm. he just kind of reads you and then he he makes that calculation and then three rounds later he executes you with that calculation that he made three rounds ago and that is like so he has very efficient movements and then he's also while he's moving efficiently he's also learning how he's gonna beat you later he's not he's not in a huge rush to knock you out in the first round yeah yeah he calculates everything and he downloads information and yes he he does have a lot of movements down pack but it's also that he can do so many movements and like he'll see a for instance like he'll make a feint on you he'll see an opening and be like okay if i throw the left hand that might be a little short there's this kick that maybe i could throw it but like maybe you've never thrown that kick he'll just throw that kick you know what i mean Mm -hmm. he'll just make whatever adjustment he'll make up that combo to throw that thing and just do it and attack you and hurt you you know and that's what a what i like about him you know the read and then the ability to just execute whatever maneuver he needs to in order to hurt you yeah it seems like he's very calculated with what he does yeah that's that's something that i feel like started to click for me in a very small way around the Mm -hmm. five or six month mark since we've been training is how much how calculated and how sort of mathematical fighting is where if someone if someone throws a jab or Mm -hmm. jab cross faint body kick they're all these little sort of defenses where you can decide Mm. am i going to get out of the way of this am i going to strike when this Mm. happens am i going to get out of the way then strike so it's like all these little things that in a small way for me since i haven't been doing it that long i'm still you know fucking muay thai baby but uh we all are don't worry but uh yeah like knowing how many different things there are to do in defense to a single shot yeah and also some of those things becoming instinctual to where you want to you know parry and then hit him with the cross or slip cross and so it's like around the five six month mark i felt like my body starting to like anticipate certain moves rather than waiting for you to call it and then i would do it Mm -hmm. it would almost be like even though you didn't call it, I'd feel like I wanted to do that because I knew it was a defense for this. If I, like, if I was fighting someone in real life, it would mm-hmm. make sense. It would yeah. make more sense to yeah. do that. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good that you realize that. That's a good thing. Good teacher. Yeah. Th- thank you. Thank uh, you. That's uh, I wanted to get into what are the biggest differences for you or what, what are the skill sets that have been most advantageous for you as a teacher? Cause it's, one thing to be a good fighter Mm. i know as a baseball player just because you can play baseball doesn't necessarily mean you're a great teacher of baseball what for you has made the difference being able to teach clients 
so well and be able to translate that knowledge that you have and the, the body movements that you have into people of all different backgrounds and athletic levels and different goals. What, what has been a difference maker for you for teaching that's made the biggest difference? Um, I think the biggest thing has just been like um, getting to the point probably taking out the nonsensical training, taking that out and just telling you what it is you need to know. Um, that's been the biggest thing. And I think that's why like a lot of trainers aren't good trainers is because um, they don't know how to just get to the point of what you need to know. Um, I might give you something. So there's a lot of nonsense that goes on yeah. in fighting where people, yeah. you may be teaching someone, someone that something that they don't need to know. Yeah. It's a lot of nonsense. A lot of like, like, yeah, you got to throw this jab 800 times in a row, go up and down the room. And like, that's good for the first session, but like, they'll make you do that a million times or they'll make you jump rope for 30 minutes straight. You know what I mean? And it's just, there's a lot of like waste of time things. That's like, okay, like you could be taking your time and like learning how to fight, you know, like you can run, we we're talking about cardio. You can run all you want, you know what I mean? But if you don't know how to fight, there's no point in you having that good cardio. Yeah. So I, I, I think the main thing for me is just, or any trainer is to just get rid of like the nonsensical stuff and just teach you what you need to know. Like, you know, like if I throw a jab at you and I taught you how to throw a jab, like basically teach you like what leg you need to bounce off of, how you parry, block, slip, roll that. You know what I mean? Just all the stuff you need to know in order to counter that. Not not just like, like this is how you throw a jab, but like I'm not going to teach you how to set up how to throw that jab. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like doesn't make sense. You know, just, just giving you what you need. Yeah. I And I, I feel like you've done a great job with that from the student perspective where and I, I feel like I've progressed at, at, at my level in a relatively mm -hmm. quick amount of time yeah. for the amount of time that I've put in because definitely I've putting mm. uh, two you know hour hour and a half sessions so two to three hours a week for six months really isn't that much to get better at something no. it, it's definitely going to make an effect but with baseball doing that shit, you know, anywhere between four, or eight hours a day for years. Oh, something I wish I thought about more with baseball is how much bang for my buck am I getting from this exercise? What is is this actually making me a better baseball player, or is yeah. this something that is tradition or someone that something told me to yeah. do that's part of the game that actually isn't getting me closer to my goal of throwing harder, throwing more accurately, being a better overall pitcher? And I feel like you trim the fat so well in terms of okay this these are your goals yeah this is what's going to get you there faster so let's do this let's mm. spar this amount let's let's do these combos let's do yeah. this amount of cardio yeah. i feel like you've done a good job at trimming the fat yeah thank you thank you that's what i try to do i don't i don't want to waste your time and and uh i also just don't want to like just take your money or something like that like like i love muay thai and uh, I love fighting. And even if I didn't do Muay Thai or compete in Muay Thai, I would do something combative in my life, um, which is also why I'm going to the army. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm going. That's also why I'm going. Um, I, I'm not going because of the benefits. I'm not going because I feel lost with my life or something like that. I'm going because I want to be in combat. That's what I want. I love the skill set. I love combat. You know, it's I want to be in that kind of place. That's how I am. You know, I love learning about combat and learning the actual skill of fighting, you know? When when did you realize that you wanted to be in the army? A long time ago. A long time ago. Well, I didn't know the army, per se. I was still looking for the right. Some sort of combat of experience. Yeah, so something, something. Um, But uh, I just decided on the army infantry just because, like, I think definitely one day special forces might be a route that I'm, I'm going to attempt to go down. But, um combat is just something i love so once i realized that i love combat it was easy for me to just be like i'm gonna go over there and go do that you know um people keep telling me like oh you know are you afraid to die this and that yeah man <laughs> dude like i'm afraid to get head kicked unconscious with a flying knee or yeah. you know what i mean or you know i'm afraid of all that stuff but you know it, it is what it is like if this is what you want to do you got to go do it you know and you, if you know the consequences and you can deal with the consequences of those things go do it you know um also you know i have a degree i'm not a stupid person i have clients it's not like it's not like i joined the army as like a crutch 
you know yeah. what i mean yeah you already you have a business for yourself you're training clients yeah yeah so it's something that you wanted to do for a long time yeah yeah there's a purpose and reason that i'm going there and i, and I think if anyone joins the military I, I think that's the one thing i would say is like you got to have a purpose for joining don't just go because you're escaping your problems or go because you need some sort of skill set whether that be construction but even then like maybe you need benefits you know me being a kid from the bronx like i dude I could not afford college, bro. Mm. Like I couldn't, you know, I had to, unless, unless I was like somehow super duper smart, which I had really good grades in high school. I don't know how I just, I did really yeah. well. So I was able to get like a lot of scholarships, but the majority of my friends didn't. 